Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be showing you how to connect Tractor Pro from Native Instruments to cables with the basic MIDI clock signal, and how we can use some of that data that's coming in to create some very simple basic animations, which you can hopefully use to create your own visual live sets in the near future. So without further ado, let's get started. So right here, I'm inside of Tractor Pro. I'm gonna click File, and I'm gonna to go to Preferences. So I'm going to click Audio Setup. Make sure that you've got sound coming from Tractor Pro. Um, and now if you click External Sync, I'll just move this over here. You need to make sure that Enable MIDI Clock is on right here. And as you can see, this part appears here, and that's what we need to synchronize with cables. The last step is we go to the Controller Manager. By default, the device is on track to scratch too. So what I'm going to go do is I'll go here and click Add Generic MIDI, and then I'll add an output. And then I go to Master Clock, Clock Trigger, MIDI Sync. Now, we need to send this clock signal to a virtual MIDI port. Now, I would advise you on Windows to use Loop MIDI. It's a really cool program, uh, and it's free. So download that. It takes a minute to get up and running. Instructions are really clear. On Mac, you're going to have to select IAC MIDI Driver. So here, I'm going to pick loop MIDI port. That now means that the MIDI from Tractor is being sent to loop MIDI port, the output. Device target, make sure that's on focus, and that's it. We're good to go. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to click close. Now you need to make sure that auto and master is selected here, and that the sync option is on here, and the sync option is on there. Okay, so let me just rewind the track. So now I'm going to go into my cables patch, and this is here, and you'll be able to grab this in a little bit um, from underneath the video. So if I press F for flow mode, nothing's happening. So let's take a look. This has my virtual MIDI driver, loop MIDI port. So this is the data that's coming in from Tractor. Here I've got the op MIDI clock beat. This allows me to receive MIDI clock signal. And now let's just do this. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to press play. I'm going to turn on sync with this, and I'm going to press sync one time. Okay, so now let's go back to cables. Press F for flow mode, and as you can see, we've now got data coming in. So if we click MIDI clock beat, we can see we've got the subtech, we have the BPM, we have the tick duration. And here we have two triggers coming out. So this is beat and this is subbeat. Easiest way to explain it is, imagine you're counting one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So beat outputs on the one and subbeat outputs on every number. That's the easiest explanation that I can come up with right now. So trigger counter, as you can see, is keeping count of how many triggers come in. So if I press the reset button, you can see we've got this. So this is going way faster than this one here from beat because this just is going every time on the one count. So we can already use this to do a lot of cool stuff inside of cables. So I'm gonna scroll down and here's a little chain that I've pre-prepared. So trigger counter is outputting a number. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna throw it into modulo. This is basically gonna allow me to loop numbers. So modulo is now on eight. And if we look here at the result, we get this kind of loop. And this loop is going to allow us to do some really cool things. So the next stop I've got is trigger unchanged, because I don't want a trigger every time there's a frame called in cables. I only want it to happen when a number changes. So that you can see here, a number changes, and we get a trigger. Now, the number from modulo, as you can see, is going into if equals then. Why? If this number equals this number, zero in this case, we then get a trigger. Later on, this will make sense. This allows me to create an offset. Does a trigger happen on zero, three, four, seven, or eight? Toggle bool, last one. So when it gets a trigger, it outputs a true or a false, and it alternates between the two, as you can see here. So now we connect this to bool anim, and let's just grab a main loop, because bool anim needs this to work. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to create main loop to bool anim. And bool anim will go between the value false and the value true whenever it comes in here. And the duration is determined here. So let's put duration on half a second. Let's put direction on both. And if we now go here, we can see it goes between 0 and 90, depending on if true or false is coming in. So let's use this to animate and uh, make something happen on the screen. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to grab a matcap material new. Just put that over there. 
move down a bit. I'm now going to grab a transform. And now I'm going to grab a cube. And the cube I'm going to put on width 1, height 0 0.5, length 0 0.5. I think I forgot to put this in cruise mode. There we go, cruise mode. So now it should just play on the whole time. Great. So here we have this cube, and now we're going to plug this bool anim into the transform. And we're just going to put it on rotate Y. Okay, so we've got something happening now. So with bool anim, by tweaking the duration, we can make it go slower or faster. That's the basics. Now we can pick direction. So we can say only happen when it's true, or only happen when it's false. It's kind of like a way of picking the offbeat with the Boolean. So I'm just gonna put it on true for now. Okay, so the thing we've got here is, if we go to tractor, if we speed up or slow down the track, that duration with bool anim stays the same, right? So then we've got times when an animation like might not finish. So there's a really cool little trick for this. So here we have the um, tick duration. And this changes depending on the BPM. So I'm gonna grab value. I'm gonna put this here. Let's just make a little bit of space. Turn off flow mode for now. So I have this tick duration. As you can see, this will change depending on the BPM. So now I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna plug it into a multiply. And this multiply, I'm now gonna plug into duration. And if I now turn this down, we can make the animation go faster or slower. And you know what? Let's make this cube a little bit wider so it's just a bit clearer what's happening. Okay, great. So this is, th this is the most basic animation in its basic form. So if we now go to modulo and we put this on four, it's going to happen twice as fast. If we put it on 2, it's going to happen like this. Put it on 16, it's obviously going to take longer. So that's just the basic idea there with how to determine when things happen. So I'm going to grab bool on him. It needs a trigger. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab the bool. And I'm going to plug that in here. And now I'm going to get this tick duration. And I'm going to plug it into duration here. And I'm now going to plug this into position Z. So now I want to say go back minus four and come to zero. But I think this is happening a little bit too quickly. So I could grab another multiply. And this is the best part now. I can make the speed independent of this one here. So this one's going to this bool anim. This one's going to go here. And I'll plug it into duration. And I just want it to have a different speed basically. So if I go to bool anim and I put it on animate both, it's going to go back and forth, as you can see. And I can say, I want this to happen a little bit slower. Now, you should definitely check out a bool anim, the easing modes. They allow you to get a lot of really cool um, behaviors. Um, you should check out the animation tutorial that we've got for that. But just play around with them. So this is like one of the most basic things we can do here. So we could stack this up and make a whole lot more stuff go on. So let me just grab this and paste it here. I'm going to grab this trick counter and I'll put it into the modulo. And now I'm going to put this on four. I'm going to grab the trigger from here. Now, you know what? Let's grab it from here just to keep it a bit tidier. Great. And now I'm just going to grab the clear color op and I'm going to get the bool on him. I'm going to output values between 0 and 1 on both. So I'm now going to get this, and I'm going to plug it into red, green, and blue. And now I'm going to grab this tick duration again. I'm going to put this into a multiply. And now I'm going to put this into duration. I'm going to make it faster. And as you can see, it's now happening at twice the speed as the cube animation because this is on modulo 4 and this is on modulo 8. So just to visualize that, we have this very short loop there. And if I go here, I have a much longer loop. 
So this I could now also put on an irregular number. And then it's gonna kind of like go in and out of the beat. So let's just put it on two. You can get a much faster effect. So that's like, this is your general chain to just be able to create animations that happen on different parts. So I could go ahead to bool anim and say only happen on false. And now I've got this kind of like synchronization going on. So the sky's the limit with this. This is just like the very basics of what you can do, but it's more than enough, hopefully, to get you started and inspired to start making your own visuals with MIDI clock signals. So you could use Tractor Pro, you could use Ableton Live, Renoise Cubase, anything that just gets MIDI clock into cables. So. That was this video. I hope it's been educational and informative. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forum. Thanks for your time and thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.